Wir begrüßen ganz herzlich Uta Böllinger in Brighton, UK. Wir haben gerade schon gesagt, guten Morgen, ja, weil es ist 5 Uhr bei dir. Wow. Ich ziehe meinen Hut, dass du so früh aufgestanden bist, um uns jetzt ähm, ganz tollen Input geben zu können, wie wir einmal für uns selbst sorgen können. Ja, also nicht unbedingt die Fähigkeiten für den Beruf, sondern wie wir uns um uns selbst kümmern können in dieser Stresssituation des Online-Unterrichtens, in der Stresssituation der Pandemie, des Lockdowns. Und ich bin ganz froh, dass wir dich gewinnen konnten heute ja. für, genau, für eine knappe Stunde, 45 Minuten uns etwas äh, zu erzählen. Perfekt. Ja, Danke. vielen Dank, Katja. Schön, dass ich dabei sein darf und ähm, mein Wissen mit euch teilen darf. Ähm, wie Katja gerade schon gesagt hat, ich bin in, äh, in Brighton, hier in England, ähm, ursprünglich deutsch, wie man vielleicht hört, <lacht> aber ähm, schon seit 20 Jahren hier in der UK. Ähm, dementsprechend werde ich dann auch gleich auf Englisch halten, da ich Ernährungswissenschaft hier in der UK studiert habe und mir da einfach auf Deutsch auch die äh, Fachwörter fehlen manchmal. <lacht> Im Moment hört sich das noch ganz gut an, aber wenn ich gleich den Workshop auf Deutsch machen würde, würde man, glaube ich, äh, mitbekommen, dass das für mich etwas schwieriger ist. Ähm, aber ja, ich freue mich, dass ich dabei sein darf. Also ich teile dann jetzt mal ähm, meinen Screen, damit ihr meine Präsentation sehen könnt. Mutter, kannst du mich hören? Ja. Ich bin deine Moderatorin jetzt während deiner, deines Workshops und werde dann den Chat im Auge behalten. Möchtest du die Fragen immer wieder dazwischen haben oder lieber am Ende? Oh ja, eigentlich ganz gerne doch dazwischen auch, wenn, wenn, wenn die Teilnehmer Fragen haben. Alles gerne. klar. Dann okay. werde ich immer wieder sagen, falls es Fragen gibt. Genau, falls es Fragen gibt, bitte schreibt einfach die Fragen im Chat. Super. Und äh, ihr könnt meinen Screen sehen. Perfekt, also dann fange ich mal an. Ganz kurz vorab, ja, um, yeah, just a quick disclaimer, I'm going to switch to English now. Uh, so obviously everything that I'm sharing with you today, guys, is going to be applicable to most people. Just some really good tips to help look after your physical and mental well-being, like Katja said, uh, during this um, very stressful situation that we've all been living through over the past year. Um, but of course, this information is for educational purposes and, as always, um, should never replace any medical advice. And of course, if you have any diagnosed medical condition, you should always consult a doctor or your um, healthcare professional before making any major changes to your diet. So that's just a quick disclaimer from me. Now that we have that out of the way, we can get started. Um, so I've already introduced myself. My name is Uta. Um, like I said, I'm, I run a nutrition clinic here in Brighton on the southeast coast of the UK. And um, I help clients one-on-one um, -on -one creating bespoke nutrition plans to help with health conditions, to help support overall well-being, weight loss, um, fertility, all sorts of hormonal things, really. Um, and also over the past year, working through the pandemic and lockdown, um, I've noticed an increasing Uh, need for support with people's mental health as well as their physical health and they really are connected because if people are highly stressed they're not going to be digesting and they're not going to be absorbing the foods that I tell them to eat very well so you know everything in the body is connected so this is one of the reasons that I created this workshop and I'm very very happy to share this with you today because in my experience, and also when I speak to my colleagues, we've noticed this increase in um, you know, the, the need to support our clients, not just with their physical, um, but also their, their mental health. And so, yeah, I'm very excited to share with you today what I've, what I've been learning. And I also know that whilst we in the UK here, have been in and out of lockdown over the past year. I do understand that where you guys are based, it's um, the restrictions are a lot stricter and um, have been ongoing. And so um, I think there's even more of a need to support you and give you those tools to, um, to support yourselves during this situation. 
So let's get started actually by talking about that in a little bit more detail. I, you know, I don't know how about you, but this picture is a really great reflection of some of the days that I've had in the past year where I really just felt like I'd had enough and I really didn't want to even get out of bed in the morning. Um, so that's completely normal. If you're a human like me, you've probably had days where you felt the same way. Um, but I really want you to have a little think about how do you actually feel? How do you feel um, teaching online during lockdown and balancing um, home office and homeschooling if you have small children at home? You know, these are just some of the challenges that you might have experienced. Obviously, there's a lot more, but these are the, some of the things that I would like to know how you're feeling. Um, so, Katya, I don't know whether you prepared the um, the word cloud that we uh, that we talked yes. about last time. Yeah, could Can we do that? It? Can you see it already? If okay. not, then okay. Uh, Marta, come on the scene. Nein, ich glaube, dass Uta muss ihren okay. äh, Bildschirm Screen Sharing stoppen. Jetzt haben wir es, oder? Ja. Und jetzt kann man es sehen? Ja. Genau. Ja? Ja. Okay, cool. Then please go to menti.com and use the code. And use the code. And Uta, we are looking for adjectives, right? Exactly. So if you can think of the questions that I've just asked, and they're on the screen here for you, and just think of a couple of words, adjectives that describe how you're feeling when I'm asking you those questions. German, English, or both languages? Oh, English, English. preference. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I think the word club might get a bit uh, busy. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so stressed looks like that's a... <laughs> A big one overwhelmed we've got um we've got some positive words as well which is great so glad that you know some of you are feeling good and feel like you're able to deal with it but we definitely can see that stressed and overwhelmed overwhelming time consuming um and we've got exhausted and we've got tired and fatigue in here as well so first of all, thank you for your participation and for sharing um, sharing how you're feeling with me. That's really, really helpful. So you are not alone. As I, as I was saying, you know, um, this is the exact experience that I've been having and also what my clients are telling me. So when I take on a new client, I to, you know, go through a detailed medical history, but I also obviously talk, talk a lot about their current health and how they're feeling. And this is what I've been hearing from them. And, um, and that's been coming up more and more over the past year. And so that's something that I've really started addressing, um, addressing as well. So absolutely normal to feel this way if you're a human living through a pandemic and in lockdown. Um, it is a stressful situation. It's, you know, um, everything's changed from one day to the other. Our lives have become very unpredictable in some ways. And then on the other hand, you know, lots of the things that we previously would have liked to do that were maybe unpredictable are no longer possible. We can't see our friends and family. Um, you know, we worry about our health. We worry about our family's health. We worry about our children and how they're coping with the situation. And all of this worry and stress and anxiety then leads to um, fatigue and tiredness and exhaustion. And that has a very, very, you know, detrimental effect on our physical and mental well-being. So um, 
So let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. What actually is stress? What does that even mean? Stress was that one big word, right? That came up there in the uh, in the middle of that word cloud a moment ago. And what actually does that mean? I think a lot of us, when we talk about stress, we think about the emotion, but it's really important to understand that stress is a physical mechanism. Stress is as effectively when your body starts to release stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline. Cortisol is sort of the master stress hormone. Um, that Those are released from your adrenal glands, cortisol and adrenaline and some others, um, and they regulate different functions in your body. And we have two modes of our nervous system. One is the fight or flight mode, that's stress. And the other one is the rest and digest mode. And that's when we feel calm. And, um, and we can do, you know, our body can focus on resting and digesting and reproducing and all of those things, whereas fight or flight, it's very much survival. And the stress mechanism that was, you know, um, designed by evolution to, um, to keep us safe in situations where we are under physical threat. So if you think about the history of humans on this planet, when we were stressed in the past, it would have been because we were under physical threat, because we were either running away from a wild animal or having to fight somebody else off for food resources, for example. And so it's a really important mechanism for survival. And that's why it takes priority over everything else. So when your nervous system perceives threat, you go into fight or flight mode and cortisol takes priority over everything else. And what happens is that your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure goes up, your pupils dilate, you have a hyper awareness of things that could cause danger in your surroundings. And all of the um, restored energy, so, uh, so glucose reserves are released and, um, and transported around by this, you know, blood pressure, high blood pressure that we just talked about, so that it can be utilized by your muscles so that you can then run away from that bear because this is what your nervous system is perceiving. So stress in itself is not actually a bad thing because really it's a mechanism that was designed for our survival. And it makes complete sense that when you are stressed because your brain perceives that you are under physical threat and it thinks that you're gonna have to run away from a bear that everything else switches off. So whilst your muscles work really well when you're stressed and you've got this hyper awareness so that you can perceive if there's any other danger in your vicinity, there's a lot of other things in your body that you would also normally quite like to function well that then switch off. So your immune system doesn't function properly when you're stressed. Your digestive system doesn't function properly, so you're not going to be digesting and absorbing foods that you're consuming. Your reproductive system switches off. It's not needed when you're running away from a bear. So it makes complete sense. This is not by fault. This is by design. However, what isn't by design and what doesn't really make sense is the fact that when your, um, your nervous system perceives stress, it doesn't understand whether you are stressed because you're running away from a bear or whether you are stressed because you have a deadline that you have to achieve or you are living through a pandemic and you're worried about um, what's going on in the world or you're in lockdown and you know, you're having to homeschool and teach at the same time. So whilst your body is doing all of those same things that it would have done originally, it doesn't really make sense when you're sitting at your desk and you've just had an email that stresses you out because you're not running anywhere. So this is where stress becomes a problem for our health because our body and our brain hasn't adapted to this new modern world that we're living in. And that's why it's so important. 
to look at stress and what we can do to support ourselves during this situation where all of us have been for the past year under constant or chronic low level stress that is having a very detrimental effect on our health because like I just explained our digestive systems are suffering, our immune systems aren't working very well, everything's kind of going a little bit out of whack, we're feeling really tired and fatigued and anxious, that anxiety is actually because your brain is creating this hyper awareness because it wants you to check if there's any other dangers physical dangers in your vicinity and that's just you know causing all sorts of problems for us so anyway sorry a little bit about stress there to start with so that we can all understand what we're actually dealing with here so what we're going to talk about today of course we cannot change what's happening in the world around us but what we can do is look at ways that we can make ourselves more resilient and that we can support our bodies in dealing with these stressful situations. And there's lots of tools that I'm gonna give you today to do that. So first of all, these are my top three things that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. Regular movement. This is really, really important for your body to function optimally, but it's also a really great way of getting rid of those excess stress hormones that might be going around your body when you've looked at, when you've been watching the news or, you know, um, something's going on, just the daily stresses that we all have to deal with. So if, remember how I just explained that when you're stressed, your body releases stored glucose uh, or glycogen, and that's where your energy is then coming from for your muscles. If you don't use that, then you've now got high blood sugar levels that your body has to get rid of because they're actually really damaging. Whereas if you're moving regularly, your muscles can actually use up some of those things. The second thing is relaxation and knee time. This is really, really important because where we are in this state of sort of hyper arousal and hyper awareness of our nervous system, if we don't take time out even if it's just five, 10 minutes a day to bring our nervous system back down to a calm baseline, our body's gonna really struggle and the nervous system can actually create you know, a sort of pattern where it then stays in that loop and it can become very, very difficult to then switch it back off later on. And that can lead to things like problems sleeping, insomnia um, and all sorts of other issues. And then finally, of course, nutrition is my big passion in life and it is very important. So nourishing your body and looking after yourself in terms of the foods that you're eating can actually really help deal with stressful situations as well, because again, it can help balance our blood sugar levels. We're making sure that we're getting the building blocks that our body needs to create hormones and neurotransmitters, would help, which help to keep our um, uh, nervous system, you know, functioning and to keep our moods balanced. So the first and second point you can actually combine in one of my favorite activities. So I just want to say that obviously any exercise you do, whether that's going for, a, you know, a, um, a walk or um, exercising, doing yoga or Pilates or high intensity interval training, um, whatever it is that you enjoy doing will be beneficial. But the reason I like yoga is because it actually combines points one and two on that previous slide, because you're actively moving your body but at the same time, you are taking up time for yourself and you've got that deep breathing and sort of meditation style um, breathing that actually helps with, you know, calming yourself and calming your nervous system. So you can combine those two points. And yoga has been shown to reduce stress, improve energy and performance in clinical studies. So some of the studies that I've looked at, because yoga was one of the things that really helped me during the um, first lockdown that we had last year. Um, so because, I, you know, I have a scientific mind, I actually like to look at the research that's there. And some of the studies I looked at, they really physically measured cortisol levels. So cortisol, the master stress hormones before and after yoga and saw a reduction and over a longer period of time that improved anxiety and depressive symptoms in the study subjects. It promotes optimal immune function because like I explained, when you're stressed, your immune system um, is lowered and doesn't function optimally. 
It also increases brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So apologies for throwing in a really um, strange term here, but BDNF is actually a molecule produced in your brain, which is needed to form new habits because it's needed to form neuronal pathways. It can help improve mood and cognitive performance. But when we are highly stressed or anxious, um, we actually lose brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And doing yoga regularly has been shown to increase it. And that's where the benefit comes from. And of course, because we're moving physical, physically, it also helps to build strength and flexibility. So like I said, why yoga? It actually benefits both body and mind. It's super, super easy to do at home, which is great for all of us at the moment because nobody's allowed outside. And it's also accessible at all levels. So this means anybody can do yoga because you can really start with the very basics, even if you've never done it before, even if you haven't got great mobility, yoga is fantastic and it is also accessible for all age groups. So you can do it with your family at home. So to demonstrate that, I just thought I'll take you through a super quick session today, um, just to give you a little bit of an introduction, if you've not done yoga before, just to show that actually doable for everyone. And you can see me here in my yoga outfit, which I am not wearing today, because I also wanted to show you that um, you can do yoga even wearing office clothes or, you know, any clothes really. And, um, and also if you are already, maybe you're already a yoga pro and you know what you're doing, then it's still great to get five, 10 minutes now to just just get moving because I know you guys you know have had a long day of presentations and sitting down um, which we all know isn't the best so let's get started guys so I would invite you all to join me now for the next 10 minutes to just go through a really simple routine if you are wearing shoes I would like you to take those off but otherwise there is nothing that you have to do in terms of prep as you can see here I'm wearing my shirt and jeans so I'm just going to step back and we are going to do a very very quick yoga session together i'm gonna just this is uh, the time where we can all switch on the camera so uta doesn't feel so alone that would be so nice now I it's would... allowed perhaps wo sind die philippinischen deutschlehrer ja, ich dann ich unter der palme wird hier trainiert otherwise it's just me and uh, me and katja <laughs> <laughs> Hintergrund ändern. So, let's get started. So, everybody just first of all stand up. And like I said, anybody can do this. Thank you so much for joining. So, if I can all get you to just stand up and just roll your shoulders back for me. So, just up and back. Oh, that's good, right? And just everybody just close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths. And first of all, I just want you to check in with your body. How are you feeling? Are you feeling relaxed or are you feeling any tension, any pain? Check in with your heartbeat. Is your heart beating slowly or fast? Are you feeling tired or awake? So just take another deep breath and just observe how your body is feeling today. Great, so you can open your eyes and we're going to do some simple neck rolls. So just sort of moving your head around slowly. Continue to breathe. And if you're like me, you can probably start to feel a few tense points there in your neck and we'll roll the other side. Very, very common for people who sit down a lot, which we're all doing at the moment. And basic neck hygiene, so important. Okay, great, lovely guys. So another deep breath in through your nose and then out through your mouth. We're going to do some shoulder circles. So same thing that we did earlier, just moving your shoulders up and then down, up, back and down. 
And I want you to match, try and match your breath to your movement. So inhale as your shoulders move forward and up. And then exhale as you're moving them back and down. Let's do that a couple of times. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Really well done, guys. And we'll now just do the same thing. So just try and keep matching your breath to the movement as much as possible. So we're gonna move our arms up above our head. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And one more of those, inhale. And exhale. And then now I'm move up, arms up and then just keep them there. And then just hold on to your left wrist with your right hand. And then as you exhale, just stretch to the side gently only as far as you can go comfortably. And come back up and the other side. Lovely guys. And then just inhale and exhale. And as you exhale, bring your arms back down. Great. So we'll now do a really gentle forward fold. So I'm just going to turn sideways so, so that you can see me better. So what we're going to do is inhale and then as we exhale, we're going to gently allow our body to roll forwards as far as you can comfortably go. Don't push yourself here. Okay, so inhale. And exhale, just allow your upper body to roll forwards and down. And then just hang here for a second. And this is really great for the neck, guys. So take a couple of deep breaths here and then just move your head a little bit. So nod your head, yes. Shake your head, no. Really, really good to just give your spine a little bit of relaxation as well. And then on the next inhale, very, very slowly roll back up, very gently, one vertebrae at a time. And then just roll your shoulders back again. Okay, lovely. So now we're going to attempt tree pose, but I'm going to give you a few different options based on your level and how you're feeling today. So, you know, really take it easy, guys. But um, basically, I would like you to stand up straight, but with your knees just um, relaxed, not locked. And then shift your weight onto your left leg. And then there's a few different options here. So you can either just move your right leg up a little bit, but you can keep your toes on the ground if you feel more comfortable that way. Or if you're up for a little bit of a challenge, you can move your right leg up and then put your um, right foot onto your left thigh. So this is tree pose. So you can be either here or here, that's completely up to you. And then you've got a couple of different options with your hands here. You can have your hands on your hips. You can have your hands in front of your chest. Or if you're up for another real challenge, you can have your hands above your head. But whatever you feel most comfortable, guys. Okay, so I'm just actually going to stay here. We're just going to take a couple of deep breaths. Well done. <laughs> And one more, inhale. And as you exhale, gently bring your leg back down to the ground. We'll do exactly the same on the other side. So 
you keep uh, your shift your weight onto your right leg and you can either have your left leg just bring it up but keep your toes on the ground for balance or you can bring your left leg up and then again a few different hand positions options here for you whatever you feel most comfortable with today and inhale and exhale one more inhale and as you exhale just bring your left leg back down to the ground well done guys great balancing posture here i really enjoy tree pose because it just always makes me feel like i'm a little bit more in control <laughs> and then our final activity for today physical activity for today it um it's one that might feel a little bit silly but actually it's a great one to get your um your blood flowing and get you a little bit more energized and keep your um legs hip width apart and make sure that your knees are not locked but they need to be nice and relaxed and we're just gonna swing from side to side make sure that your arms are relaxed and this really is an activity i haven't made this up um, <laughs> my yoga teacher taught me this <laughs> it's a really nice activity to just get everything flowing in your body and like i said definitely helps when you're doing a presentation at five o'clock in the morning and you need to wake yourself up a little bit this is a good one to do before you get started so you can speed it up a little bit don't forget to breathe and then just allow your body to come back to stillness what I would like you to do guys is do exactly what we did when we started just close your eyes and observe how's your body feeling now is it feeling any different to when we started are you feeling tired or more awake how's your heartbeat what's that doing now that we've had a bit of movement any tension or possibly a little bit less than we started with and just take another couple of really nice deep breaths and just observe great you can open your eyes thank you so much for joining me so I hope that you enjoyed that and like I said regardless of whether this was your first time doing yoga or maybe you're already a yoga pro this is really just for me to share you know that this is super easy to do but can in a very short period of time it can make a quite a big difference right so you don't need to be doing hours and hours of yoga even five ten minutes even if you're you know working and you've just got a quick break it can really help relax bring down your nervous system but also keep your body moving so like i said you're combining that you know relaxation with movement and that's why i love yoga and why i think it can be so useful and you know it's really helped me but i also think um oh great thank you so much for the feedback um in the chat there i also just think you know um i, I recommend it to a lot of my clients now because like i said this is so important to to combine so um katya will also share with you um a little video that i recorded that you can then use at home again if you're new to yoga but there's also tons of tons of free sessions um, available online so we'll come back to the presentation uh, again thank you guys so much for joining me um, in this and we'll move on to um, to the nutrition side so we have another very quick activity for you here guys so Katya I think we've prepared a poll and so we should be able to see that in a moment. Do I need to sh uh, stop sharing my screen? Oh no, here it is. So guys, have a look at this poll and select the statements which you think are true.
Okay, great. I see some results coming in here. That's looking really good, guys. Got a few more people to answer. We'll get in there. So being a healthy weight can decrease the risk of complications in many types of diseases, including uh, COVID-19, that should say. Eating a mango before eating sweets reduces the bad impact of sugar. Some food and nutrients can improve your mood and only sport can improve your stress resilience. So which of these statements are true, guys? So I can see a lot of you already answered. And um, so I'm going to start looking at the results with you. So guys, being a healthy weight. Um, oh, Katya, I think it's just gone back to a different. Oh, yeah, Paul. <laughs> being a healthy weight can decrease risk of complications and many types of diseases. That's absolutely correct. Eating a mango before eating sweets reduces the bad impact of sugar. Sugar, No, unfortunately, it really doesn't. Uh, there are foods that you can eat that will do that. Um, things that include foods that include protein, for example, uh, but not so much a mango. Even though mangoes are lovely and they're very good for you, but they are actually quite a high sugar fruit. Uh, and fruit doesn't really, yeah, doesn't really impact um, positively the absorption of sugar. Some food and nutrients can improve your mood. So, uh, so far, 52% said that that was uh, correct. That's actually true, guys. So, um, so there are lots of different nutrients, like I explained earlier, that are important because they're building blocks for your body to produce your hormones and neurotransmitters. And your hormones and neurotransmitters is how, how our body controls our mood. So absolutely food and nutrients are very important for your mood. And only sport can improve stress resilience. Of course, we already know that that is not true. So thank you so much, guys. Um, so these were slightly different to the ones that I had here, but but these are there's, there's some of them here and then there's some more. And on this screen that you're seeing now, all of the statements are correct. So. Good nutrition can decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease, such as high blood pressure and heart disease. That's correct. Being a healthy weight can decrease the risk of complications. That was one of the ones we had in the poll that we know is correct, right? There's been scientific, scientific studies on that in the past year. We know that obesity is a risk factor. Some foods and nutrients can improve your mood. Yes, we know that's correct. Um, eating well can improve your energy levels. That's another one. And nutrition has a significant impact on your immune system. So why all of these statements? First of all, just to get you thinking a little bit, and I wanted to see what knowledge you might have already, um, but also just to highlight why nutrition is so important. Of course, I've studied this for three years and it's my absolute passion in life. So I am a little bit biased. Um, and I understand that there are many other factors that impact your health. Um, but the, you know, nutrition is very, very important. You really are what you eat in many ways. Um, so another quick activity, guys. So you can put your answers in the chat if you know, if you know the answer to these. Which foods would you find vitamin B9 in? So if you have, if you if you know, um, please put the answer in the chat. I can't actually see the chat right now. So if somebody could read out answers to me, that would be helpful. Yeah, I will do it. Thank you. So vitamin B nine. Do we even know what this is, and what food do we find it in? Still no answer. Peanuts, fish. Peanuts. So yeah. yeah, okay, lovely. Yeah, great. Thank you for, for sharing your thoughts. So vitamin B9 is, is actually most of the B vitamins we find in small amounts in many different foods. So we get our B vitamins if we eat in a whole foods diet, but particularly B9 is actually found particularly in green leafy vegetables such as spinach, kale, and so on. And uh, what about magnesium? Again, guys, feel free to put your answers in the chat if you have any idea what foods you might find magnesium in. Banana? Yes, very good. We do find magnesium in bananas. We also find magnesium in nuts. And we also find it, again, in green leafy vegetables. Um, so green leafy veg, good source of many different nutrients. Um, Yes, avocado as well. Whoops, sorry. Uh, yeah, thank you. Whoever said that avocado is absolutely correct. We do find a little bit of magnesium in there as well. And what about zinc? Zinc. 
shellfish? Yes, very good. So the, the very highest source of zinc food that we have, as far as scientists know on this planet, are oysters. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't eat those every day. Um, but also <laughs> all fish and shellfish. And the only true good um, source of zinc in, uh, plant, in, in the plant world is uh, pumpkin seeds. Um, so not a super easy one to get if you don't eat fish and shellfish um, a lot of the time. And then finally, vitamin A. Any ideas, guys? So waiting. Squash. Yes. Carrot. Carrot. Thank you. There we go. Broccoli. Carrot. That's what I was waiting for. Absolutely. Vitamin A. Yeah. Lots of different veggies. We find beta carotenes in, and beta carotenes are then converted by the body into vitamin A. Now, guys. The reason I did put this activity in here is not to um, highlight these particular nutrients, but actually just to get people thinking a little bit and also to realize that there are loads of different vitamins and minerals and not everybody wants to go and study nutrition for three years. So you don't need to know all of these. And um, you know you don't need to know all of these in order to know how to eat healthily and support your body. Not everybody has to learn these off by heart and what foods they're in and then wake up every morning and think, where am I gonna get my vitamin A, my zinc, my magnesium, my B9, my B9 and all of the other ones from. So what I'm gonna share with you are like my top tips on how to make sure that you're getting a good, amount of all of the essential vitamins and minerals that your body needs to function without having to memorize all of them. Eat the rainbow. Top tip, if you're eating a variety of colorful foods, and I'm not talking Skittles and Smarties, but colorful vegetables, you are likely to be getting a good amount of all of the different vitamins and minerals that your body requires because actually the colors in these foods give you, know, give you an idea of what type of nutrients are in them. So when we talked about vitamin A, we now know, right, orange and yellow and red vegetables are the ones where we tend to find beta carotenes. It's the beta carotenes that sometimes give the vegetables their color and fruit also. Uh, green leafy vegetables I just talked about, right? So eat your greens, guys. You've got your B vitamins, you've got your ma magnesium, you've got iron um, and a whole host of other, other things. So vegetables are all superfoods effectively. The deeper the color, the more nutrient dense they tend to be. And if you can try and eat a rainbow, maybe not every day, but throughout a week, you're gonna make sure that you'll be getting the majority of the nutrients that your body needs. So rather than counting calories, count the colors on your plate. Eating whole foods. So I like this quote here by Michael Pollan. Um, he's a food author and activist. And he said, don't eat anything your great grandmother wouldn't recognize as food. So even your grandmothers, maybe depending on how old you are. My grandmother used to shop at the market and she used to go to the market on a Saturday and buy her vegetables. And then she would go to the fishmonger and then she would go to the butcher. And, you know, she would get the fresh eggs at the market as well. So these are all foods, right? Vegetables and plant proteins such as beans and lentils and um, uh, chickpeas. And, and, and also, of course, fish and meat and eggs, if you eat those. Um, also, you know, dairy. Um, these are foods and your body recognizes them and they are full of nutrients and your body knows what to do with them. A, a packet of crisps is not very nutrient um, dense because all of the nutrients get destroyed in the processing. Um, again, packet of Skittles or Smarties, not a lot of nutrients in there other than, you know, your carbohydrates and your sugar, but you're not going to be getting um, your, your minerals and your vitamins from those processed foods. So it doesn't mean that you can't ever have those, but you just need to be aware that when you're eating those, they are nutrient deficient and they're not going to benefit your body in any way. What we also know now, which is super interesting, food manufacturers that produce these processed foods that, you know, many people don't even class them as foods in some ways, they understand that the vitamins are lost in the manufacturing process and they sometimes add them back in afterwards. What studies have shown now is that your body then doesn't really 
utilize those nutrients the same way as if they were coming from a whole food. So the vast majority of your diet should come from whole foods or what I just like to call foods. Um, so not Diet Coke, effectively. Having some healthy snacks. So in the pandemic, during lockdown, what I've experienced myself and with a lot of my clients is that, you know, people are snacking a lot more, grazing a lot more because we're at home more and we've just got this constant access to food. So first of all, obviously, if we can avoid doing that altogether, that's best. But at the same time, if we're struggling with that, then, you know, having healthy snack alternatives can be a really great way to still support our body during lockdown while we're working from home um, without having to, you know, be really super self-disciplined. So let's think about what's actually a healthy snack, right? So a lot of people might be thinking fruit, that, that's good. Yeah, fruit is a really good source of many vitamins, but actually many fruits also contain high amounts of sugar. So we do want to not have those too much. We don't want to have too many of those. And we also don't really want to be having them on their own. Now, one really good hack or trick that you can use is to always include a source of protein with a snack. So for example, if you are having a fruit, maybe have a small portion, a small handful, like the size of your palm of nuts and seeds, because there you're getting some protein and also some healthy fats that will help slow down digestion and absorption of the sugar, therefore not spike in your blood sugar levels, which is in your interest because that helps with weight management and energy levels and also high sugar levels, are, you know, cause inflammation in the body and all sorts. So always including a source of protein is a really good way of making any snack healthier. Opting for whole foods that we just talked about or foods which are naturally low in sugar having maybe some vegetables um, that you cut up into stripes and having some dips that you can dunk them in and also opting for lower sugar fruit. So, um, you know, obviously I live here in the UK, not in the Philippines, but I'm hoping that some of the things that I've put on here are familiar to you. <laughs> um, those are some of the foods that um, I believe are hopefully more available in your vicinity that are lower in, in sugar um, than some of the others that you might find. And then, of course, like I said, nuts and seeds. So if you have a variety of healthy snacks available in your home and you have a craving, it's a, you're much more likely to then opt for those if they're already there than if you have to then make that decision and go out and buy something healthy when actually you've got the, you know, the biscuits and the chocolate or whatever it is already in the cupboard. So being prepared is another thing that I would advise. And yeah, just replacing some of your snacks with healthy snacks can help balance your blood sugar levels, which is also good for your mood. Just to say again, that doesn't mean that you can't ever have the cake, the biscuits and the chocolate, but it's just, you know, doing everything in moderation. The same way that, you know, if you ate McDonald's every day and then once a week you have a salad, it's not gonna make you super healthy. The same principle, principle applies the other way around. If you're being super healthy most of the time and then once a week you have McDonald's, or you know whatever it is that's absolutely fine too your body can handle that so if you know the 80 percent 20 percent rule in nutrition i think this picture kind of makes it quite clear have a good routine have your healthy foods your healthy snacks 80 percent of the time and then 20 percent of the time it's absolutely fine to have whatever you like and then finally my last bits of advice here is meal planning and prepping when we were still going out for work this was actually something that many of us did naturally because we had to. Now that we're all working from home, what I've seen with myself and my clients is that we're not taking the time to prepare in advance because we think we don't need to because we're at home. And then what happens is you become very busy at home because you're still working and homeschooling and doing whatever. And we're actually keeping ourselves really busy. And suddenly all that spare time that we've gotten back from the commute has actually um, uh, been used up for extra meetings or whatever. And, and then we end up, you know, waiting until we're super hungry and by that point we're craving foods and we're going to be more likely to choose foods that are high in carbs and processed carbs and high sugar and so on so planning and prepping in advance when working from home is is super beneficial in terms of helping you to make healthier food choices so do this 
if you're not used to it, and by the way, Katya, as well as sending out that video, she's going to send you a pack of handouts that I've created for you that I think will be really helpful, that will help you put that into practice, what I'm teaching you here in this short session. And the meal planner that you see on the screen will be included there. But start by just planning three days in advance rather than the whole week so it's not so overwhelming. Don't feel like you have to have a huge variety of foods every single day. Like when we talked about eating the rainbow, that doesn't have to be every day, but try to vary them as much as possible throughout the week. Start with foods that are easy to batch cook, even better if you have a freezer. So things like soups and stews. And also if you're gonna do you know, preparing or planning at least in advance what you're gonna have for only one meal of the day, make it breakfast. Because if you start the day right with a healthy, balanced, high protein, low sugar breakfast, your blood sugar levels are gonna be more balanced throughout the day. You're setting yourself up for success because you're less likely to then have cravings and start grazing and snacking all day. It's also a really good idea to just invest in a few good storage containers. That makes it a little bit easier when you're preparing meals in advance and then keeping them in your fridge and your freezer. So guys, just to recap, right? The three main things that we wanna be doing is regular movement, even if that's just five or 10 minutes a day, having some me time and relaxation. And if you wanna give yoga a go, that's a really good way to actually combine both and nourishing your body by making sure that you're eating whole foods, 80% of the time and having healthy snacks at hand, trying to eat the rainbow. So including lots of different colors in your vegetables, if you can. And the easiest way to make those changes when it comes to food is to meal plan in advance. And if you can even prepare in advance. So, um, do you also follow me on social media? You can see me here on Instagram at canal underscore nutrition. I share a lot of recipes. I share nutrition tips. I do live cook-alongs occasionally. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I'm always happy to answer any questions that you might have as well. So feel free to, to join me on Instagram um, if you're interested in more recipes and tips. And otherwise, you know, um, yeah, it's been a pleasure um, speaking to you this morning. Um, sorry, this afternoon for you guys and I hope you enjoyed the session and found it useful. So thank you so much for having me. Dankeschön, Uta. Es war wie immer super interessant. Wir haben ganz, ganz viele Tipps bekommen und ich sehe schon die Reaktionen in den Zoom-Räumen. Hände klatschen, Herzen. Super, vielen Dank. Ach, schön, ja. Yeah. Ah, sehr schön, ja. Yeah. I love your IG post, somebody wrote. Love that. Thank you. <lacht> ja, vielen Dank. Also ganz, ganz toll. Und ähm, ja, hat mir sehr viel Spaß gemacht. Und ähm, ich hoffe, es, ja, hoffe, das war für euch auch so. Und dann wünsche ich euch noch viel Spaß und Erfolg für den Rest des Tages, für die nächsten Webinare und verabschiede mich damit. Dankeschön. Dir ein schönes Wochenende. Bis Danke, Ed. Tschüss.